my sins away Oh, happy day Oh, happy day Good and your mercy endureth 
many know, hallelujah. Oh, that God is fighting for us, hallelujah. Oh, he's always there for us, hallelujah. Oh, we're going to sing it out in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Woo. Put your hands together, hallelujah. Oh, how many believe that God is fighting for us, hallelujah. Oh, God is on our side. Do you believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, the battle will take a place. Hallelujah. But we serve a God. Always with us. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Let's sing out tonight. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm talking about our God. He's fighting for us. Hallelujah. Oh, all together now, we're going to sing it out to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. Shake it in the name of Jesus. 
awesome God tonight. Hallelujah. How many believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Oh, glory. Glory, glory. Come on, worship the Lord, hallelujah. This is what we come to do, hallelujah. Oh, we love you, we love you, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to sing out this song, the evidence, hallelujah. And all throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storm made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of the goodness all over my life. All over my life. All over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak, cause fear may come, honey. Fear may come, but fear will lead. You lead my heart, Lord. Oh, 
first touched your life, hallelujah. Oh, when we were first born again, hallelujah. When God set us free, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to sing this song now, born again, hallelujah. Have your way, my God. Oh, and just remember when God touched your life, hallelujah. As we sing this to the Lord tonight, hallelujah. Well, today I found myself after searching all these years. And the man that I saw, he wasn't at all who I thought he'd be. I was lost when you found me here. I was broken beyond repair. Then you came along. Sing a song over me. All together we go. It feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living for the very first time. For the very first time in my life. Oh. take our prayer request before God here tonight. So you can remain standing or you can sit. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take care of, of these prayer requests. As I read these prayer requests off, and may you begin to pray for them. 
And then at the end, let's all stand together and we'll begin to pray for all our needs by simply lifting up our hand and lifting up the voice of the Lord. Um, amen. Let's go ahead and pray for Gloria uh, Fergoa. Amen. For healing tonight. Uh, Father God, we continue to pray, Father, for uh, Sister Sabrina, Lord God, and baby Jose, Father God. Uh, we continue to lift up, amen, Pastor Ruben, Sister Charmaine and their family, Lord. Uh, Juanita, Lily, uh, Junior and Ellie, Father God, Elizabeth Campos and children. Uh, Rosendo Cuevas and children, Father God. Ray Cuevas, uh, uh, Junior and children, Father. Maggie Cuevas, uh, Richie uh, Caravales, uh, uh, Don, amen, Prohaska, uh, Jesus uh, Camarillo, uh, Jackie Campos and children, uh, Claudia Campos and children, Isaiah, amen. We continue to pray for Isaiah tonight, for Brother Chino, Sister Martha, the whole Fisliano family, and Elise, amen, for healing uh, from a virus, and amen, that God may touch and heal in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up Patty tonight uh, for healing and strength, and Malik. Uh, amen from Chrome disease. Uh, let's continue to press in for Dominique tonight. Uh, Melly Martinez and family. Uh, Overo family. Amen. Uh, they're mourning the loss of a husband and father. Amen. So let's pray uh, for God's comfort for them tonight. Uh, let's pray for Anaya. Uh, amen. Our sister Jackie. Amen. Sister Nani and uh, uh, her daughters. Amen. Uh, let's continue to pray. Amen. For uh, baby Zaro tonight for healing in the name of Jesus. We pray uh, for, amen, for our sister Bucci and brother Ralph. Let's keep them all in prayer, amen, as they're expecting their uh, their next edition. Hallelujah. Let's pray for them. Hallelujah. Let's pray for sister Christina tonight for, uh, amen. Let's pray for uh, Randy and, and Cora and their family tonight, uh, baby uh, Andre. Uh, let's also, amen, continue to lift up uh, Gerard and Javi, all the children, God, Valerie. Uh, continue, Father, to touch and strengthen uh, all the little children, Father God, all our children, Father Juliana, Lord, and Jazz. Uh, Father Genesis, Anthony, Eli, amen, for your protection, Lord. Uh, Ivana, Father God, uh, Laura Silva. Uh, Father, we pray, God, for uh, Josiah, Elijah, and Isaac. Uh, we continue to pray for all the police, fire, sheriff, security, first responder, and teachers, God. Lord, we continue to pray for our brother Eddie and sister Aurora, Father God, for a touch from heaven. Brother Frank, Maria, little Frank, uh, uh, Alicia, and Emilio, and little Rudy, and mom Erica, God. Uh, Nadia, Salori, and the boys, and Felipe, Salori, and family. Uh, Mary, Salori, and the boys, and Patty, Salori, and family. Father, we're going to believe you, God, amen, for Gloria and Yolanda Mendoza, Father God. Oh, Father, we pray for Jose, uh, Christina, Jesse, and Victoria, uh, the Melendez family. Father God, tonight, Lord, we pray for Jerry Rodriguez, Lord, and Alex and Emily and Quentin, God. We lift up uh, uh, our sister Sheila, Father God. We ask for your favor upon her and Chris Melendez, Father God, and, and Mondo uh, Curos, Father, for healing and a touch, Lord. Haley. Uh, Buraski, God, and all our church family, Father God, yes, Lord, and, and Renee uh, Lugo, Father, we lift up uh, Minnie tonight. Uh, we also pray tonight, Father God, for Pete and Shirley in, in Arizona, in Jordan, in Florida. Uh, we pray for uh, Carolyn, God. We also lift up Christine tonight, uh, the Lugo family, Lord. Uh, we pray, Father God Almighty, for Andy in Texas. I lift up my family in Texas, God. Uh, Anthony, Father, uh, we also pray tonight, Father God, for our sister uh, Maribel and our sister Cassandra and all our sisters, Father God. We pray for our sisters and our brothers, Lord. Uh, Emilio tonight, Father, for a touch, Father God. Uh, we also pray for Rosa Burgos and family. Uh, we pray, Father God Almighty, for uh, Tina Doma, Lord, and uh, Tia Doma and the Hernandez and Alvarez Tinoco family, Liz, Joe, em Emo, and Jim. Uh, Margie, Virginia, Liz, and Isa, uh, Adam, Malik, and family, and Jesse, Christopher, Puente, and Mary Lou, God. And we continue to pray for our sister Stephanie, Lord, and our brother Eric, Father God. And Father, I'd like to lift up all those, God, that, that gave their life to you on Sunday night. On Sunday, Father God, we pray for all of them, Lord. Um, amen. That you may continue to draw them, Father God. And we pray for all our families that came out on Sunday to visit, Lord. 
We pray, God Almighty, that you continue to touch them, Father. Continue to draw them to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So let's go ahead and lift up these requests, but also your prayer requests. Amen. So if you're able to stand tonight, let's all stand together, church. Amen. And let's also pray for the uh, uh, the El Centro Conference. Amen. Tonight's the second night of the conference. Uh, so let's keep that also in our prayers. Come on, let's go ahead and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Um, Oh, Father God Almighty, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, God. Oh, Lord, Shando Roborebe Raba. Father God, right now, Lord, uh, we believe in you, God Almighty, Lord, uh, for healing, God. Uh, oh, Father God Almighty, I know right now, Lord, touch, Father, touch, Father God. Uh, I pray, Father, for my wife, oh, Lord. Uh, I lift her up, Father, to you, Lord, that you may touch, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, bring healing, God. Uh, oh, Father, right now, Lord, uh, I pray and stand in the gap for my dad, Lord, and my mom, God, uh, and my family, Lord. I pray, God, have mercy. Oh, Father God, Almighty, touch, oh, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for all the churches, Lord, uh, connected to you, Father God. Uh, oh, Father, we lift up those that are still heading out to the conference, Lord. We pray for traveling mercy for them, God. Uh, and, Father, we pray for every single message out there, Lord. Uh, and, Father, we pray for your church right here, God. Uh, continue, Lord, to draw us to you, Lord. Continue to speak to us, oh, God. Uh, we lift up, Father God, your word tonight, Lord. Uh, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Oh, come on, church, let's pray tonight. Let's Let's thank him tonight. Let's worship tonight. Oh, Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you and amen and amen. Well, praise God. Get out of your seats, church, and tell somebody amen. God is on the move. Hallelujah. All right, as we get back to our seats, amen. Why don't we go ahead, amen, and welcome out all those online with us, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome all those online, amen. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Praise the Lord. And let's also welcome all those that came out tonight, amen. Thank you so much for being here with us, amen. I apologize the mic sounds a little weird. I had to switch mics because my other one ran out of batteries, amen. Hallelujah. But it's okay. You can hear me, right? Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, we have some announcements for you. Uh, today is, uh, once again, Tuesday night. Amen. And once again, uh, let's remember, amen, that uh, we don't only celebrate resurrection, amen, on Sunday, amen, but we, we celebrate it every day of our lives, amen, <laughs> recognizing what he done for us. Hallelujah. So uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. Really quick, uh, remember this prayer. In the mornings, there's prayer uh, in the mornings from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, that's Monday through Fridays, and also on Saturdays from 8 to 9 a.m. Amen, on Saturday. And then also there's corporate prayer on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7 p.m. And then this Thursday is the first Thursday of the month. So remember that there's the new converts class every first Thursday of the month. Right here at 7 p.m., right here in the Fellowship Hall from 7 to 8 p.m. with our pastor, Reuben. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then come on back to church on Friday. Amen. Come on back on Friday. We're right here, 6.30 for prayer, 7.30 for service on Friday. Amen. And uh, just uh, really quick, remember uh, that the El Central Conference is going on this week. So if you want to uh, try to uh, find it, amen, it is on, uh, on the uh, El Centro uh, uh, Facebook, amen, I believe there's on, on Facebook, amen, so if you want to check out the, uh, the, the teachings, the messages, the preachings, amen, uh, remember they are two hours behind us, but you can catch yesterday's message already, and uh, you can catch uh, today's uh, four hours from now, 
Amen. So, or tomorrow. Amen. They'll be online on Facebook, their Facebook page. Amen. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Remember that, uh, amen, the Shape Up Teaching is coming up in April. Yes. <laughs> April the 13th, 8 o'clock prayer, 9 o'clock teaching, right here in the Fellowship Hall. Amen. And also the next thing, amen, that uh, I want to mention is the revival that's coming up. I want to make a, a, a correction. Amen. I, I gave the wrong information on Sunday. So uh, if you wrote it down in your calendar, change it. Amen. Uh, so basically the revival is going to start in Cal City on that Wednesday. Amen. Uh, April the 24th. Amen. They'll be in Cal City at 6.30 p.m. for prayer, 7.30 service. And then they'll be at the Whiting Church that Thursday. Amen. That Thursday they'll be in Whiting, 6 p.m. prayer, 7 Amen. And then, uh, amen, on Friday, they'll be with, here with us. Amen. So we're going to have Pastor Alex Sacido, uh two of the on Friday and on Sunday. Amen. The 26th and the 28th. And then he's also going to do the men's discipleship that Saturday, amen, April the 27th. And I think that's it for the immediate announcements. So let's go ahead and give the Lord a big hand of praise as the ushers come forward for the offering. Come on, let's praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Lord. Have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, man. Let's praise him. Thank you, Lord. He is so worthy of our praises. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, please open them up to the book of Matthew, chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 15 through 22. I was listening to some things on YouTube, and they were trying to stop, or let me rephrase this. Whoever those pastors were, they were talking about that ties was not real. That not to give tithes, that that wasn't the purpose of, of, of you know, doing what was do, doing. And my wife caught a glimpse of it. We were sitting there in the morning having coffee. And the person that was talking about it began to say, yeah, that the tithes that are this and they're not real. You don't have to tie. But what caught my wife's ear is that the guy swore saying that he was preaching the gospel and saying about not tithing. I says, man, what a bold-faced lie. So the Lord began to challenge me, and I began to look up some things. So I want to share with you Matthew 22, 15 through 22. It begins to read. Then went, <clears throat> went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk, talking about they wanted to catch Jesus in a lie. And they sent on unto him their disciples with Herod, Herodian, help me, Lord, Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, uh, any man for thou regard, regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their weak wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said not to them, who, who is this image and super, uh, subscription on it? That they say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. So here, how many know the devil's very cunning? And he tries to kill, still, and destroy the people of God, especially the blessings of God. Don't ever let the devil lie to you about not giving tithes to the offering. How many know that that's what takes care of this beautiful church? Those doors have to be open so that we can get more beautiful people like yourself into the house of God. Our families, our loved ones, and co-workers, it takes money, church, to take care of the house of God. We're having our conference. I'm going to know that God's people need to take care of that as well. So let's be, you know, just wise with our money, 
and just believe in God and take care of God's business. Are you with me today? Brother Bob, can you help us out? He that believeth. Let's sing that song, He That Believeth. Come on, sing it out with me. Well, he that believeth, he that believeth has an everlasting life. And he that believeth in the Father and the Son, come on, sing it out. Has an everlasting life. Come on, come on. And when I get to heaven, gonna walk all around. Have an everlasting life. Come on, you sound good. And when I get to heaven, gonna put on my crown. Have an everlasting life. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless Him, Holy Name, God. Bless Him, Holy Name, Jesus. Bless Him, Your Holy Name, Jesus. Lord, have your way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's dismiss our platform. Hallelujah. I'll try not to keep you too long. Hallelujah. I know we had a good holiday. How many had a good holiday? How many know God was good? Some of us got to see family and friends, but how many know we ate good? Hallelujah. But now how many know that today, that Easter isn't finished yet? You know, we, we came to celebrate the Lord's Resurrection Day. But this is something that the Lord gave me a while back. We need to celebrate the Resurrection Day every single day of our lives. This is why you and I are alive, that God gave us a second chance. But not only a second chance, but he gave us a second chance to witness to people and letting them know that they are alive because God has a purpose for them. The title of this teaching or sermon today is The Napkin is Still Folded. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. The napkin is still folded. This is a Jewish tradition that was passed down uh, to, the, to the children of Israel. But before we get to that, I want you to open your Bibles uh, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. We're going to read verses 1 through seven. Forgive me, I'm a little raspy. I'm just trying to get over this cold, so help us, Jesus. Mark 16, one through seven, begins to read. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary and mother of James and, and, and Salam had bought sweet, sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And, they, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell the disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him as he said unto you. Church, can't you see in your own mind these ladies ran to the disciples to tell them the good news? He's alive, they said. He's alive. He's risen from the dead. Can't you see Peter in the corner of the room shocked saying, what? What did you say? Is it true? Did the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ come back? Is it, is it real? Yes, he said to meet him in Galilee. And Peter, who has been in depth with this desperation for three days, sit, stunned at the reality of the resurrection and almost encouraged, is one, once again plagued in his mind at his pitiful denial 
of Christ and is dragged right back down into the pit of despair and thought, surely he doesn't mean for me to come. I denied him three times. I caused and swore, surely, surely he doesn't mean me. And the lady said to Peter, by the way, he did mention you by name. Yes, thank you. Yes, he mentioned you by name. He did it. What did he say? He said, go tell the disciples and Peter. How many know that God includes all of us in his resurrection? He just, just didn't save your neighbor or your friend or your family that's sitting here today or friends. He called all of us personally to speak the truth to people and let them know Jesus is risen. Let me ask you a question. How many of us testified about the saving knowledge of Christ this Easter Sunday? Did we tell anybody about his goodness and what he's done for you lately? Did you try to outreach people and tell them that this was Christ's day? Or did you just take it with her's ham and potato salad and whatever we ate? Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. How many know that? We should rejoice and be glad in it. We need to tell other people about the goodness of Christ. Why did Jesus want to see Peter? To rebuke him? No. He wanted to restore him. And of one of the sweetest scents you'll ever see in Scripture is Peter and Jesus coming together and Jesus hugging him and saying, Peter, do you love me? Not Peter, are you going to cuss me out anymore? No, he said, do you love me? That's a real issue today, church. If you're here today and you know you're a backslider or left God for any reason, let me ask you, was there a time when you were right with him? Do you see the real question is not are you going to drink anymore, cuss anymore? A real question today is do you love him as he loves you? Thank God that the napkin is still folded, church. He is still saving souls. How many know that? He is still reclaiming backsliders. An illustration, I heard about a little boy who had done something very naughty. His mother punished him. He was afraid his mother was still angry at him. In the kitchen, there was a chalkboard and on the wall where they wrote down phone messages. When no one was around, he wrote on that chalkboard, Dear Mom, if you forgive me, please wipe this out. He went to his room for about an hour, later returned, and to his surprise and joy, the chalkboard had been completely erased. How I many know that's what God does to us? He forgives us of all our sins. He takes away all the things that we've done against him and against other people. He forgives us. How many know that? So it is that God wants us to let people know about the goodness of Christ, to continue to preach the gospel, to continue to preach the truth. Not mind what's going on out there on YouTube and all these other churches that are afraid to preach the truth because they don't want to offend nobody. How many know the, the word of God is truth, and it is going to offend people, but it's going to tell them the right path to keep on. It's going to tell them the way to live because that's what God told his son Jesus to live. This is something that we have to continue to do is to continue to uh, be testimonies unto the will of God. Are you with me today? In the book of Philippians, verse 1 through 6, I want you to turn there real quick. Because sometimes we feel that God is finished with us. How many know God's not done with us yet? Hello. You might be sitting here today feeling like God's done. He, I ain't seen nothing done for who knows how long. I've been praying for something, but God has not moved yet. I've been asking with all my heart, and God doesn't hear my heart. I've been crying, shedding tears. And God's not done anything. Philippians 1, 6 says, 
And I want you to really understand this. Write this down, Mark, with your, with your pen. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he's telling us that, A, there is power in the name of Jesus. That he's going to continue to do something in your life. Don't give up on prayer. Don't give up on hope. Don't give up on faith. Don't give up on Jesus Christ. Your job is to continue to pray to fire down. No matter if you don't see nothing happening right now, your tomorrow will be blessed. God is telling his people, you need to understand, I am risen, and it's going to be an everyday thing. I am risen every single day of life. And he's telling us just to come with him. Are you with me today? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You might think, because you hear people, I don't know about you, but do you ever hear people, co-workers, family, oh, Jesus ain't real. You've been going to that church for so long, giving all your money, doing whatever you do there, and I don't see God moving your life. How many, know, how many know what I'm talking about? Anybody? I've gone to work at times, and they tell me, oh, here he comes. Oh, yeah, well, here I come. What, what's up? Oh, the, the holy roller. I'd rather be a holy roller instead of slipping to hell. I'm going to pray to fire down. I'm going to speak in tongues wherever I have to. And if I'm going to pray for people, I'll pray for them right in front of their face. It doesn't bother me. But look what the Lord talks about. Because there are so many witnesses and this is why it's so important to keep in our word and continue to go over our word as many times. Even if you read it yesterday, read it again. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 6 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received and wherewith ye stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen a compious then of, tw of the twelve, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto the present, but some are fallen asleep, meaning have died. So you can't tell me that Christ didn't resurrect when the Bible tells me otherwise. When people try to tell you that God didn't exist, lead them to the scriptures. Show them that Christ did live. Tell them, like our pastor was saying the other day, let them know about your testimony, what he, what he brought you out of. Some of us couldn't put down a joint, couldn't put down a bottle, couldn't put down the bar or scene. But yet God came into our lives and began to do a complete changeover. Are you with me today? You need to understand who you serve. Thank God that the napkin is still folded. The importance of the folded napkin church in the Jewish culture makes some powerful points in considering the resurrection. Let's turn our Bible to John 20, 1, 7, uh, 1 through 7. John 20, 1 through 7 begins to read. Let me know when you're there. Amen? It begins to read. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we have not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth. And that other disciple and came into the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. 
And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he in, not in. Then come in Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre and see if the linen cloth lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped, into, wrapped together in a place by itself. Now there's a meaning for that, and we're going to talk about it. In the Bible days, when someone died, church, it was a duty of a family member to close the eyes of, of, and kiss the cheek of the dead. When Christ died, this became a duty to two men, Joseph of Arimathea and, and Nicodemus. They went to Pontius Pilate and begged the body of the Lord Jesus. Then they had to take him down from the cross, which was not an easy task. First, they had to rig the ladder and climb up on the side of the cross, and they then had to pull his hands off over the nails. There was no way they could get those spikes out of the wood, not from that angle, not with his hands between the wood and the nail head. Once the hands were loose, they allowed the body of Jesus to sag into a sheet and would then remove his feet from the nail in the same manner. Now, in order to understand the significance or the importance of the folded napkin church, you have to understand a little bit about the Hebrew tradition of that day. The folded napkin had to do with the master and the servant. And every Jewish, and every Jewish boy knew this tradition. When the servant sat at the dinner table for the, mas- for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table was furnished perfectly, and then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating, and the servant would not dare touch the, touch the table until the master was finished. How many know you do that at the restaurant today when you go? So, I don't know about you, but the restaurants that we've gone, the, the waitresses or waiters, they're waiting for us to finish. Once you wipe your mouth with the napkin and you put it on, on top of the plate that you used and you finish your meal, they'll come and start picking things up. But if you leave your napkin folded right next to it, they know you're going to come back to eat. Are you following me today? Now, if the master were done eating... He would rise from the table, wipe his fingers, his mouth, and clean his beard, and would wad up the napkin and toss it onto the table. The servant would then know to clear the table. For this, those days, the wadded napkin meant, I'm done. But if the master got up from the table and folded the napkin and laid it on the side of the plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because the servant knew that the, the folded napkin meant, I'm not finished yet. The folded napkin meant I'm coming back. So how does this relate to the tomb of our Lord and Savior? We read two passages about the disciples and and the women of God going over there. The last one that talked about it was that Mary and Mary, they ran in there. They didn't see anything. They got excited. They ran out there looking for Peter and the disciples and began to tell them, hey, you need to come and see the the sepulcher. You need to come and see the tomb. The body is gone. Somebody stole the body of Jesus. We don't know where it's at. Peter began to question, what do you mean? How do you, what are you saying that they took the body and you don't know where it's at? So him and another disciple, they run into uh, going towards the tomb. The other disciple beats him, runs in there before him. But then Peter comes in right behind him and he notices the linen that they put on, on the people that are dead. They put also a piece of napkin over their face. But this time, then all his clothes from the burial were left in one place by the feet. And the napkin of the Lord that had on his face was folded nicely at the head of the tomb. That meant that Jesus Christ is still here. 
That means that Christ Jesus is not finished with us yet. That means that there's still plenty of work for him to do in us and for us to do for him. Are you following me today? This is something very important that we must understand that we must celebrate Christ Jesus every day. And the napkin that he brings to the table is, is, is telling us he's not finished yet. He leaves it for everyone to see. I got something to do for you. Are you with me today? Peter and John had walked with Christ three years. They had watched as he opened blind eyes and deaf ears. They watched as he literally raised from people from the dead. He watched him die. And as they watched, all their hopes, all of their dreams were scattered. All they could think was, it's over. It's all over. And for three long days, they were in depths of despair. The lights of their soul had gone dim. Peter had said, I'm tired of this. I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I used to do. Then after three days, they saw the empty tomb. Not only did they see the empty tomb, but they saw the folded napkin and an empty tomb. I believe with all my heart, church, that when we saw the folded napkin, God spoke to them in their being and said, he's not finished yet. He's coming back. See, you need to understand who we serve. I thank God today. He's not finished yet. The tomb is empty, church. Our Savior is alive. And the napkin is still folded. Let me tell you, he's not finished saving souls yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. The folded napkin says that he's not finished saving souls. The Bible says that Jesus came into this world for one reason, to save sinners like you and I. John 3.17 says, John 3.17 for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank God for Jesus Christ that died on the cross for us. Thank God that he rose on the third day. Thank God that he saved his church like you and I. Thank God that he gave us a second chance. Thank God that he's still moving in the spiritual realm in our lives. Thank God for the people he's bringing in. Thank God for everything that he does for us, church. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in not any other name, for there is one other name. There is no, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. you, you got to understand the miracle-changing power of God, church. In the book of Romans 3, verse 23 says, For all all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Thank God that he's seen our sin, but thank God that he forgave us of all that sin. Aren't you happy today that God touched you? Aren't you happy that you're not doing the same things as you used to do years ago, months ago, maybe weeks ago? Thank God that he broke those chains of bondage. Thank God for a second chance, church. For some of us that weren't good pa parents or good husbands or good fathers, thank God that we have a chance to make things up. Thank God that he's moving the way he moves. Thank God for what he's doing in other cities. Thank God for our conferences. Help us, Lord. In God's eyes, there's no difference, church. There are no big sinners and little sinners, just sinners. In God's eyes, I, I'm as guilty of breaking God's holy standard. In God's eyes, there are sinners who have been forgiven, like me, and sinners who have not been, but certainly can be. Years ago, a great evangelist by the name of Billy Sunday was preparing to go into a certain city to do a major crusade. He wrote ahead of time to the mayor of the city and said, would you please send me the names of people in your area who need serious spiritual help? People that are drunkards, alcoholics, people that are murderers, people that need a touch of God, people that need Jesus. 
So on Sunday, surprise, the mayor sent him the telephone book. That mayor knew something. He understood that we all needed spiritual help. Thank God, church, that the napkin is still folded and he is still saving souls. When you have time, and I'll be closing pretty soon, in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 through 75, it, it begins to read you the story of our Lord and Savior. I didn't tell the girls to put this down because it's a long story, but it begins to tell you about the beatdown of our Lord and Savior and different things that he went through. And I sit there and think, my God, there is no normal man in this world that could have taken that beat down as he did. There is no normal man that could have taken a 40-time whipping. They said that ball of the whip had glass and, and, and screws and different things that would wrap around your body and rip your, 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 your meat off. There is nobody that, that I, I can think of that took a beat down for my sins besides Christ. There's nobody that would take a crown of thorns and being pushed on, it, on his head, bleeding already when he was already being whooped on and, and beat up already. But I thank God that the napkin is still folded. I look at these things like, my God, you died for me a long time ago, Lord. And I ask God for forgiveness because I didn't know him as I was growing up until later on in the years. But I thank God that he was there to give me a second chance, church. You need to understand, church, that napkin is still folded. He hasn't given up on you or I. He loves you with all his heart. Our God knew what needed to be done. He had to send his son for you and I to live. Don't ever forget Easter and say, ah, it's coming again in April. Yeah, it's going to come again. But do you live the way God wants you to live on a daily basis? Do you understand what God sent his son to do for you and I? I could think, I, I, I can't even begin to imagine how his hands were when they put those nails in there, six to eight inches of nails. Then in his feet, and then when he was, gave up the ghost or dead, that Roman soldier speared him. Where it says in the scriptures, only water came out because there was no more blood. Thank God that the, the napkin is not folded. Thank God that we have a second chance. Are you with me today? Let's live life like God wants us to live and tell people about his goodness. Tell them about your testimony, what you've gone through, what God done for you. You don't have to know the Bible back and forth, no scriptures, although it is good to, do, to know it. But you can tell them about your very life, what you went through. And you'll find many people that were like you in, this con in your condition. Just trust God. Love him with everything you got. And lastly, celebrate it every day what God did for you. The next time you go to a restaurant, remember, watch what happens. Sit down at a restaurant. When you finish eating, wipe yourself and put it right on the plate. I guarantee you they'll take it, the plate. But if you're not done, just wipe yourself, leave it on the side. They won't come and bother you because that's what the Lord said. Are you with me today? Let's bow our heads. Help us today, God. Just a simple message being that we were celebrating Easter. I just wanted to continue on it. This is something I preached a long time ago. <clears throat> and I just want to bring it to give understand, a little bit more understanding. And I know you understand. God saved his people, very intelligent people, very smart people, because we're smart enough to come and ask God into our lives. But truth be told, we have to minister and tell people about the goodness of Christ. Because it already happened. Good Friday passed, Easter passed. What's next? He was showing himself to 500 testimonies, plus not including his disciples and the woman of God there. But he went and told people that next day, I'm alive. 
I survived. I, I'm back. I went to the place of hell, took the keys from the devil's hand, and I'm back to restore what the canker worm has eaten. Church, we have so much going for us. Don't give it up and don't give up. God loves you for who you are. Our God is a forgiving God. He doesn't give us the license to go back and continue to do the same thing over and over again. But he's a forgiving God. If you're sincere with your heart, just tell him, I'm here and I need forgiveness. Maybe today you've been a little bit away from the Lord. Your heart's not right with Jesus. And only you know. Today's a chance to get it back in accordance with the Lord. I see everyone here. I believe everyone's saved here. But maybe you've just been away from the Lord too long. Maybe you're viewing in today and you don't know Jesus, Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you. Get things right. God died for all of us. Gave us a second chance. Will you live that way for the Lord? Will you love him? He told Peter, will you love me? Peter answered yes three times. And God's asking you tonight, will you love him? You need prayer today? The altars are open. Have your way today, Jesus. Father, touch your people, God. Touch your children, God. Touch all my brothers and sisters here, God. Father, thank you that you're still alive. Thank you that your napkin is not folded, God. God of mine. 